Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And not being a lawyer, I will try and stick to your time limit. It should be a bit easier for me. Um, it has been interesting to follow the Justice Secretary in this debate, but a pleasure to hear the speech of the Right Honourable Member for Tottenham. Uh, and, and was an honour to be on the Shadow Justice and Attorney General's team until a few weeks ago. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Conservative Party have traditionally prided themselves on being tough on crime, but their record of delay in tackling crime is nothing to be proud of. The central theme of our criminal justice and court system has now become delay, delay, delay. A backlog of over 54,000 Crown Court cases means a four-year wait for justice. And justice delayed is justice denied. And this impacts not only on the victims of crime and their families, who so often cannot move on with their lives, their work, and often their mental health. But a delayed and failing justice system also fails, fails the accused and those eventually convicted and sentenced. We cannot hope to address the causes of crime without giving those caught up a realistic timescale for court hearing and for decision. And for those convicted, a quick start on work to cut future reoffending. And a slow justice system costs us all failed trial dates, the financial and human cost of remanding custody, and for our communities, a lack of faith in the whole criminal justice system. The fault of these delays does not lie with our courts or those working in them. I know from visiting Isleworth Crown Court how tirelessly they are working to ensure that the courts run smoothly. No, Despite the Secretary of State's explanation, he can't get away from the fact that the government brought a sledgehammer down on our legal system and has done since 2010. By 2026, half of all our courts will have closed and there are 27,000 fewer sitting days now than in 2016. A 15% cut in the court and tribunal service and despite agency recruitment, a shortfall of 1,400 staff still remains. We've had cuts to legal aid, to policing, uh, to specialist support, uh, and to the DPP and others. So the government may say that court delays are due to the coronavirus and that government are moving heaven and earth to fix it, but it isn't, and they're not. At the start of 2020, there was already a backlog of 39,000 Crown Court cases, with the backlog now over 53,000. The government needs to be honest about the cause of the delays and then start to address the backlog. And Labour is proposing a guaranteed 33,000 33, extra sitting days and more Nightingale Courts. Madam Deputy Speaker, as my right honourable friend from uh, Tottenham said, the Conservatives are failing to protect women and girls in the criminal justice system with record low conviction rates for perpetrators of sexual violence and an epidemic of misogyny that makes women and girls feel unsafe and victims are losing faith that the justice system will be there for them. The government's rape review was announced over two years ago and we're still waiting. Meanwhile, rape prosecutions have fallen to their lowest level on record and domestic abuse prosecutions have fall, fallen by nearly 20%. And my honourable friend from Hornsey and Wood Green pointed out that for every victim, there is, a, there is a cost. These are not statistics. And this is why Labour's put gender-based violence at the top of our agenda and why we've published a green paper on ending the epidemic of violence against women and girls. And finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to address the issue of how the justice system can better serve those killed and injured on our roads. The issue concerns members across this House and is an issue for the APPG on cycling and walking, which I co-chair. So I'm asking the government, will the government consider using the opportunity of the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill to address some of these issues, including the lack of clarity over the distinction between careless and dangerous driving offences, the inadequate sentences for fatal hit-and-run offences, as well as for serious hit-and-run and car dooring offences. And finally, the court's routine acceptance of exceptional hardship pleas from offending drivers who are seeking to, do, to avoid driving bans. I look forward to hearing from the government uh, on these issues uh, of road safety justice and also on the backlog, uh, uh, the, the backlog of court cases, their victims' bill, their rape strategy, um, and I hope the government will vote for the opposition motion today. Thank you.